when I was at Juilliard, there was very little by way of non-Western music. Largely, it's based on the Western canon and it's based on Western thought and with Western music. But I always felt like there was something missing. You know, um, I was born in Canada and, and I was not really, I didn't grow up with a sense of heritage. I didn't realize about my identity until really I started listening to non-Western music mm. first. And, and then I started traveling to Asia. And I listened to a lot of different music and I was really attracted to gamelan because of its virtuosity and it's because of its fast pace. This is ba Balinese gamelan. But I was really interested in the idea of, you know, these interlocking rhythms and uh, the idea you, you have this multi-layered sort of rhythmic and melodic experience that was very heterophonic. So um, in 2000, I think it was four, I, I got a fellowship with the UCLA um, Intercultural Performance Exchange. And that really changed my world. Um, mm. I went to Bali for the first time and I got to interact with uh, both American uh, performers and artists, as well as um, Asian artists. And right. in the room of Asian artists, I was the only one that read music notation. Mm, so because with, with Gamelon, you know, you, you don't really learn by, ra by way of notation. You learn by right. rote and you learn by uh, doing, you know, and you learn mm. by listening. Uh, so that was a, like, it just blew my mind that music could be transmitted that way. My family is very traditionally Chinese, very Confucian in a way, because uh, my mom especially really uh, was very um, concerned about family. So it was something mm -hmm. very, very close to her. And I, I grew up with cousins. Uh, in Edmonton, and we always would get together. So the idea of family was very, very important. And that nuclear unit was very, very close and almost too close, you know, <laughs> it, you know, it was like, she was very protective. So I think that it was for me, um, part of growing up, but I didn't necessarily feel it was mine because I didn't really fit in anywhere. I didn't really fit in with uh, the school environment, uh, my friends, I don't know, I, did, I didn't really identify with my, with my friends and nor did I identify with what my mom was saying because hmm. it was like, it was, it was a piece of nostalgia for her because it was from a bygone era. Right. So, uh, you know, it was very confusing for me growing up and, and, and then I would try to absorb things from all different angles. And Maybe, you know, that's why uh, music became an outlet for me, because mm. uh, it became something that I, I could uh, non-verbally explore things that, you know, uh, I couldn't express otherwise. And so, right. you know, I, I would get these questions all the time. Because you're an Asian composer, does that mean that you have to quote right, from right, folk song all the time? Yeah. 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 And, and does it mean that I'm always writing in pentatonic skills? Does right. that mean that I always have to be, you know, doing X, Y, Z in order to be called an Asian composer? And I, mm -hmm. I really don't like those categories. Um, right. And, and really at the end, we're all human beings expressing very similar things, you know? And mm -hmm. so I think for me, my philosophy is that uh, first and foremost, I'm a humanist, really trying to express uh, what cannot be expressed in words into music. And yeah. I try to embody the sense of what it is that makes us human. Mm -hmm. And um, and also, I, since I am living of this time, I'm right. also reflecting uh, what is what I observe as a as a almost as like a sociologist or as a as an anthropologist, what I observe from how we live today and then put mm. that into the music. So that's how I see things. And then, you know, all these things about identity and uh, you know, gender and all that, I think are byproducts because music is about this, uh, it's about communication, you know, mm -hmm. it's about communicating what cannot be said. And it's about 
embodying a, a sense of humanity. It's about beauty. It's about death. It's about all these things that are universal, but you cannot, somehow it doesn't get transmitted verbally. And so you have to express it through music. So in the end, mm -hmm. sometimes what comes out can be Asian-like and sometimes it's not. And right. I, at first I was like, oh my gosh, you know, uh, I was, I don't consider, you know, and, and people view me as that. I mean, I wrote an article about being a banana, right? Yellow mm. on the outside and white on the inside. I was born in Canada. So I had a largely white upbringing, but I have this Asian face. So what does that make me uh, sort of a, a nobody, right? But, you know, you over the years, you start to embrace who you are. Uh, you are a unique person. Everybody's a unique person who brings in a uh, different set of uh, values and, you know, perspectives and, and, and you have to be okay with it. This pandemic has, um, I think for me, it intensified everything. Yeah. So um, I've been really productive, actually. I know that a lot of people uh, are, are, are not feeling that, but, uh, for me, it was, it's been enormously difficult to find time, uh, because I'm here with my son who's five, who needs me all the time. And, uh, my parents are, who are usually here, they're back in Canada. They, they they, they can't be here with us. So we miss them. So uh, you start to see all the news and all the things that are happening around the world. And when I do that, everything, it just gets, like the things that I see and the things that I experience are so like strong, you know, mm. it just evokes something very strong. And so um, I put that into the music. And so the flute concerto is uh, subtitled Storm Within. And the reason why I did that was it's, it was just a culmination of all these things happening around the world. And uh, you can't help but just put that into the music. And the other thing is that I, you know, I asked myself, like, what can I add to the repertoire that's not already there? And so I didn't really want to recreate uh, birdsong, for example, in the flute, because that's been done so many times before. And I feel like I wanted to focus on the flute's uh, percussive power, uh, using mm -hmm. the lips to produce different sounds. And also, um, just the different attacks and a very, it's a, actually a very strong instrument, uh, mm -hmm. but also capable of really beautiful lyricism. So I try to display all that.